So when I was a kid, um, growing up in Hong Kong, my Chinese mom and my English dad wanted me to have both of their worlds equally. At home we spoke English, so during the day I went to Chinese school, where I learned in Cantonese and where, compared to the rest of the student body, I was considered painfully foreign. I found the situation lacking. I did not like standing out. And so, to me, English became a form of escape, a thing that made me special. At night on my bunk bed, I would rage at the injustices done to me that day and read Lewis Carroll and Enid Blyton, dreaming of a fantasy land called England, a place where every day would be a summer holiday. In 1995, my family did move to England. And imagine my disappointment <laughs> when I discovered they had school there too. At this school, I was still different. But this time, instead of being too white, I was too Chinese. I just couldn't win. With the jungle instincts of a kid in a lunch hall, I assimilated. I developed an English accent. I adopted Britpop as my favorite type of music. I stopped speaking Cantonese in public, and then I stopped speaking it at all. I grew up and I became a musician, finally achieving that permanent summer holiday. Um, I wrote songs about the English countryside, about concepts like Arcadia, or poets like William Blake. If I read a review that referred to me as British Chinese, I would balk, because it's not how I saw myself. Then one day a terrible thing happened. I turned 30. <laughs> I looked back on my life, and I saw that I had spent half of it in denial. The biblical scales fell from my eyes, and I realized that I'm Chinese. I was born in Asia. I'm afraid of the number four because it sounds like the word for death. And if you say cake, I'm going to want to see a turnip. <laughs> With the help of my mom and my aunt, I began translating my songs into both Cantonese and Mandarin. In Chinese, my songs took on new flavors. They seemed easier to sing. Lyrics composed in the West revealed their true sources in memories of my life across the sea. A swimming pool in LA moved to the apartment Ugh, sorry. A swimming pool in LA moved to the apartment complexes of my childhood. And a tanned Hollywood god jumping into it morphed into the backpacks and Air Jordans of the international school boys. Rich kid, I'm here 
Like all the best cities, Hong Kong has a Soho. As you enter Soho, you're on Elgin Street, named after an English lord um, for his role in the Opium Wars. In China, where he burned down the old summer palace, they called Elgin a barbarian. In Hong Kong, they gave him a street. And on this street, you can go to a classic British store called Marks and Spencer, and you can buy yourself a dry British sandwich. On the other side of Soho is the Manmo Temple, a beautiful red temple that the tourists love because they let you Instagram. And while you Instagram, you might just raise an incense stick to the god in the far left corner of the room. What the locals don't tell you is that this is the god of war and one of his jobs is patron deity of the triads. I like to walk this route when I'm in Hong Kong, enjoying the dialogue between East and West, knowing that I too exist on an intersection between them. At times it's been confusing and lonely, but it's also surprising and it's funny and it's precious and I wouldn't change it. Without these clashing cultures inside me, I'd have no reason to make music. And I no longer think that I have to choose between them. So before I play this last song, I want you to imagine that you're in the Soho I just described. Elgin below, the god of war above, and all around you, red Hong Kong taxis and bubble tea.
sẽ cao quá ngoan Sâu 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 hello Sẽ cao Sẽ cao quá Thank you.